welcome back to this uh, class on textile finishing. Let us see what did we do till the last lecture or in the last lecture we understood in the last few lectures the textile processing industry is consumes a lot of water, consumes a lot of energy. So, it is always a good idea to use less amount of water, it is always a good idea to use less amount of energy. So, we have had minimum application techniques including foam finishing, kiss roll techniques and so on and so forth, spray and also how to recover heat from whatever waste is going out of the process system. Uh, so, waste heat recovery uh, can help the cause uh, if right kind of heat exchangers are installed. So, this is for last lecture for this course right. Uh, we will wind up uh, after this and hopefully you would have learnt uh, this subject to the core of the subject because everything that we talk about can be talked in as much detail as one wants to talk. So, we will spend some time on learning about some of the principles of finishing machines. Uh, we will not go into detail because the a separate course would be required to deal with all types of finishing machines and their details. We are just talking about principles and why they are required and what are the advantage and so on and so forth. Some of these things we will do and uh, hope it will serve the purpose. One of the very simple machines which we call as calendaring machines is part of almost the end of the process step. So, everything when you say well our finishing is over then before you uh, let us say sell anything to any client you would make sure that there are no creases on the fabric. So, you do calendaring it is just like ironing what do you do ironing. So, you heat the iron and then remove the creases. So, that is a batch process a small garments can be done by that, but it is in a mill state it is just like ironing. So, you have one hot roll or maybe a little bit of a moist fabric could go through this in metallic systems and so it will dry a little bit and like an ironing for example, a moist fabric it will dry and the creases will be removed and then you can either roll or fold or make batches and then sell. So, this simple calendaring machine which will be in every uh, process house at the end of finishing process this is will be used to make sure that the fabric aesthetically looks good. Simply heating on a polish by an a polish roller that is one. So, this calendaring machine sometimes can do some special uh, you know roles it can play uh, with little bit of a smartness. So, if you want to increase let us say the shine of a surface then the same calendar is modified little bit called a friction calendar and what it means is one of the polished roller surface can run faster. So, if you run something faster so the surface can become little more shiny the, the things can fall in place. Uh, the hairs can be put in a certain orientation order and so it is like for example, if you press something like a iron or a very little bit of more pressure you will see at some places the fabric becomes more shinier that is the kind of principle that you have. So, it is called the friction calendar. So, using a frictional properties or the friction itself to smoothen the surface right. So, that is they are mechanical processes at best you may have a moist fabric coming in to the friction calendar area and work around. Sometime very sophisticated sets of rollers are used called a chasing calendar 
that means the fabric is chasing itself, right? So when it comes in contact with the area which is a polished surface, in this whole sequence, uh, ro roller uh, or the balls number three and six are highly polished, and they are also hot. Okay, so that's one part. But the fabric is threaded in a manner that it goes from this side all along, goes all the way, comes on, and then comes. So at some point, there are two fabrics coming in contact. So when you have a hard surface versus a metallic surface on both sides versus now you have a situation where one surface of the fabric is in contact with another fabric and fabric surface only. So it can highlight the let us say a twill material which, which can appear more the texture could be seen as uh, more highlighted, it is opposite of what the friction calendar was doing instead of making smooth, it is making let us say more roundish because what is pressing is the yarn on yarn or one yarn is falling on the gap of the other yarn and it gives a very uh, a nice look which is non-reflecting. It scatters the light more and softer look can be obtained by this chasing calendar because fabric is the one which is coming in contact with the fabric and so fabric itself is changing itself. Another type of calendar which is sometimes called embossing calendar that you actually want to have some type of a shape being seen, uh, design being formed. So you have an embossing calendar which is pressing against let us say a hot uh, roll and you can get impressions. So if the fabric is moving in this direction, uh, you are creating some of the designs here and this can be used. For example, it could become a watermark or something, it can give you an impression of uh, some embedded design. A three dimensional effect is something which you will see at the end of embossing. You must have seen upholstery and so on and so forth uh, material which give you a different shape. So based on the design of the embossing roller, you will get some design uh, being seen or imprinted on the fabric as it moves through this calendaring system. So if the design is of this type, you will get a fabric which has got some design of this kind. So this is what it is. Whether this effect is going to be temporary or permanent depends on what have you done. If suppose along with this you have a polymeric system also moving along and with the embossing, maybe you can create more permanent effect, otherwise it can be temporary or you have resin based systems which can be cured after this. So the impressions can be more permanent. So the temporariness or permanency would depend on what is the chemical. If it is only a mechanical process then it will be temporary process. If you want to make it more permanent you have to have other systems helping it. For example, a system where you have a fabric. and a polymer which is being extruded as a let us say a molten polymer is coming. This is a horizontal padder kind of a situation. All right. So what happens is this fabric is coming from here and the polymer is also coming here and they get in a way come in contact. So if the fabric is touching the first roller, only one side of the fabric will come in contact with the molten polymer which will get deposited. So as it comes out, so there is polymer on this side 
fabric on the other side, part of it may obviously diffuse also the polymer. And so you take and take it to this embossing area, whatever design that you have. If it is this one of the rollers is hot, so this polymer if it is a thermoplastic or a thermoset, but because we are talking about molten, so it is a thermoplastic material and so it will get impression. Then it is cooled by these rollers, chilling rollers and then if you see the final product, it has got a layer of polymer deposited properly laminated on the textile surface and embossing has been done. This will be more permanent because the polymer is the one which is taking the impression, textile is giving the strength. All right. So, you must have seen various kinds of upholstery systems which may be uh, using lamination embossing type of sequence. That's, that's like calendaring. So, simple calendar with just irons to little more complex which can do this, uh, the shape, the 3D design, three dimensional impressions can be created temporarily or permanently depending on what you do with them. There is another interesting thing which textile people do, normally you remove all the protruding hair from the say by singeing process or we talked about biopolishing and so on and so forth. But sometimes people say well I like some of the fibers if uniformly taken away out from the surface then uh, it will be a nice idea, people like it that is called raising or brushing. So, you have metallic brushes fitted on let us say a roller and if there is a fabric which is in contact moving either along this or it can have a situation where the fabric is coming in contact only in a specific area. So, when, when it moves the hairs will be coming out. So, based on the length of the brush, the density of the brush, the angle and the speed with which these things are going to moving, the fabric on one direction, the roller in the same direction or the other direction, one can get more or less of the hairs coming out which will give you a bit of a soft touch feel on the surface because the hair is can be getting, they can get compressed. Okay. So, there are several ways we talked about they all would involve brushes, it could be metallic or plastic or sometimes other material also, but there. This fabric when lifts the fibers, then it keeps the cushioning effect and this hairiness can give you softness and warmth. If it is controlled, it looks good, if it is uncontrolled, it is bad. All right but good amount of hair would come out and you can see them, hairiness. So, normally you remove the hairiness, here you actually want to give the hairiness, but that is the desire. So, mechanical finish. Other is where you want very small little raising to be done, not too much. Then instead of brushes, use emery cloth which can abrade the surface little bit. Okay. So, there can be a large number of rollers which have got embry, there is a large number of rollers, each of them can independently move or rotate freely also and they are in a whole system. The fabric can move all along and go out and this whole system will make sure that very mildly the surface is being touched. Now, the quality of abrasion that you may get depends on the grain which are there on the embry paper or embry cloth. Now, embry cloth. Now, this therefore can give you very small little uh, rays of little small, very, very small hair and different kind of finish. So, you have a series of rollers as shown here which have 
wrapped emery cloth or paper. So they produce very, very small, even nap and therefore give luster also a little bit because very small things are happening and gives a very soft handle. Sometimes people are selling these kind of products, they call it peach finish, like you've seen the peach fruit, if you look at the surface, something like that. And textile by itself is very flexible, it looks pretty nice, uh, soft to touch, but doesn't have long hair, right? A little bit of phrase. Before we go further, remember shrinkage due to swelling. Like somebody said, you want to have a cotton fabric stitched before you have the cotton fabric stitched, please wash it, otherwise the garment will shrink. So that was because of shrinkage due to swelling. So we understand the shrinkage due to swelling. You understand that, no? Remember, we talked about three types of shrinkages, relaxation shrinkage, shrinkage due to swelling, which is for hydrophilic fibers, cotton, and so on and so forth, and felting, which is only for wool. No other fiber has felting shrinkage. Shrinkage due to swelling uh, has been handled. So there is a process which we call it sunferization. So this finish is a sunferization finish where what you are doing is that you pre-shrink the fabrics uniformly so that excess length of warp yarns is available. So that when it swells, it doesn't shrink further because you have already done the compressive shrinkage before. This type of a thing is called the sanferizing process or sanferizing finish. It obviously shrinks the fabric a little bit so that finally doesn't shrink. That's one. And it is a special finish in case you see any fabric which is sanferized very clearly it will be mentioned on the uh, you know visible portions that is sanferized fabric and they'll charge you more money also for this so the principle of compressive shrinkage here is that there is a ball and there is a endless rubber belt you see you see this belt this is endless rubber belt so it'll go all along and come back you know this roll, of course, is a roll. So fabric is, this is the fabric, which will move from here, go all along like this, over the rubber belt, and then in between the rubber belt and the roller, and then get out from here. Simple thing. Fabric may be moistened a bit before you enter. But can you imagine just do this and suddenly find whatever you want, you can do that. You will get it. And what do you mean by that? You see, at this portion, if you see, this is convex. So rubber is stretched here. Rubber roller is stretched on the convex portion. The fabric comes in contact while on the convex portion, while the rubber is stretched stretched okay and the fabric remains in contact now it, it doesn't slip and as it is moving as it moving it comes in this area which is convex concave so this area is concave from convex to concave this change so what happens is the surface of the rubber on the convex area was stretched. Fabrics comes in contact with stressed portion. This whole thing moves to another portion immediately which is concave and therefore the surface of the rubber obviously inside compresses. The fabric also has to along with it com get compressed, fabric gets compressed. So, Fabrics in a normal state comes in the extended portion of the rubber, which is the outside convex rubber. And then it goes to the concave area where there is a compression. Rubber is going to get compressed from the inside because that becomes the inside portion. The outside of the rubber portion becomes the inside of the bent area, curved area. 
and so it gets compressed. So fabric because cannot go anywhere it also gets compressed. After this what you get is a compressed fabric uniformly So, it would have shrunk already by this process. How much it will shrink depends on the thickness of this belt. Larger is the thickness which could be pretty high, it could be 4 inches, 6 inches thick rubber, endless rubber blanket. Now, if it goes from convex to concave, changes will be more. So, very simple system as a principle can actually give you fabrics which will not shrink further because of the shrinkage due to swelling that is what we are controlling here. So when they swell there will be extra length available so that it can be accommodated without extra pulling pushing. So it is a controlled compressive shrinkage process number one. This based on the efficiency of the process at the end of the process there may be a situation that fabrics does not shrink at all. It, if you do washing it will give you zero shrinkage good for the user. Therefore sometimes this whole machine also instead of calling sanferizing machine is called also 0, 0 range that is 0 in warp direction 0 in web direction shrinkage 0 shrinkage in both directions drying has to be done. It may be slightly moist fabric and now you have to dry the fabric. The drying must be done very carefully. You we will just talk about a little bit of a palmer dryer which is the kind of dryer which is used immediately after the fabric comes out right. The, the, the fabric as it comes out will go through a drying machine which is a special drying machine called the Palmer dryer and we will talk about it in a few minutes. So before we end this so called machine let us talk about some drying machine because whenever you say you have wet the fabric you have to do the drying of the fabric also. And so some simple drying machines is what we will talk about. It is an essential process in every wet processing sequence you know you you cannot keep the wet fabric for a long time because it can get stained, it can have all kinds of problems. So, you have to dry and sometimes we anyway are doing curing, drying, you do washing and then you have to drying. So, some of the simple drying systems uh, are, we will just talk about is a cylinder drying machines. So, for cylinder drying machine there are stacks of cylinders all right, where the fabric is threaded all right so this goes like this this goes like this goes like this and up to this point and goes out and these are heated by steam all these cylinders are heated by steam fabric is in contact with the metallic surface and so heat is transferred from the metal to the fabric and the water evaporates all over all right so one stack this is the one stack there can be another stack of this type where fabric will go in the reverse direction go to the bottom and go out. So based on what speed you want to run, what is the thickness, the width of the fabric or the GSM of the fabric, rate at which you want the evaporation to take place, there can be more than one stack definitely and each stack may have 8 to 12 cylinders, drying cylinders okay, this is called a cylinder drying machine. Steam heated as we said about it, temperature of this the, the cylinder could be uh, 120 degrees or so, so that easy evaporation takes place. The pressure of the steam which is could be 5 bar or around the same where which can give you about 120, 125 degrees centigrade. Speed could be very high, I mean you may almost run the machine at 50 meters to 100 meters per minute it can go. So if you have more number of cylinders it can go very fast. The thing which I am not talking about is I like you to find out obviously when the fabric is getting dried the, the steam will condense also in these cylinders. How do you remove the condensed water? 
I think you may like to check it out or think out yourself how will you remove the condensed water. If you don't remove the condensed water because the gravity the water will always be at the bottom and at some time it may be too much. You don't want to just unnecessarily keep the condensed water inside. What will you do with that? Of course, when you get the hot water out, you will probably take, go through, take it through the heat exchanger so that the heat also is recovered. That of course you should do. So quick drying, this is uh, the type of machine that you would require, but the fabric remains under tension, you know, so that it touches the surface of the cylinder all the time. So it will be under tension. If very lightweight fabrics are there like chiffons and so on, so would you like to use this type of machine for drying? Because you don't want material which is where texture is more important to be under tension when you are drying because your aim is to dry the water and not change the texture. So this machine may not be good. So you may have some other kind of machine. One of the machine is called the festoon dryer. You know what is this festoon dryer? You see this has got, you can see there are series of, let us say, right, the rods, endless series of rods, endless series of rods which moves slowly like this and goes. On this thing where there are gaps, the fabric is fed at a speed which is much higher than the speed at which this, this thing is moving. It is an endless chain of rods, one rod, second rod, third rod, all right. So there are rods, so the rod 1, rod 2, rod 3, rod 4. This whole thing is moving like this, all right. But moving at a slow speed, the fabric is being fed at a faster speed. How much faster? fabric is supposed to make a loop as it is moving out. So it is going faster, it makes a loop and this loop moves at the same speed at which this chain is moving, right. So the loops are being formed. By the time this moves here, the other one comes in the sequence and the loops are formed. So the length of the loop is approximately same because the speed of the fabric with which it is going, of course, it is you can say this much motion is equal to this much of a fabric, all right. This much motion of the chain at that particular time, so much of fabric is being fed, so that loop is formed. So the loop also keep moving in one direction and then obviously at the same speed it is pulled out and this thing goes out, right. And of course, you would like all of this to be inside a closed chamber so that hot air goes in, exhaust comes out, I mean the, the fresh air, the humidity has to be maintained and so the exhaust goes out which is hot, which has got moisture, which can be uh, passed through, shall we say another heat exchanger so that incoming air comes out which will be required all the time. So this is your festoon dryer. So you have endless chain of rods or bars, tension free drying. So lightweight fabrics can be dried in this type of machine. Fabric loops are hanging, right? So do you see any difficulty? Do you see any difficulty? The difficulty will be that you can't force the air at a much faster because of rate. If you do, then there will be fluttering of these loops and they can, so it will be relatively, uh, let us say, calmer environment. So you will be having hot air, jets falling onto the loops, so that evaporation takes faster, but the velocities of the things are not going to be very high. So that is the festoon dryer for you. This is the Palmer dryer we were talking about, you know. The sanferized fabric instead of being drawn, dried on a cylinder dryer, no way. Too much tension. You want compressed fabric to dry in the same state. So that 
fabric for example will come to this palmer dryer. Here the fabric can remain in a compressed state dry without tension. So the fabric for example which was coming from a sanferizing unit will come from here go all along this because it is being held by an endless belt so tension is not there the belt may be under tension but the fabric just slowly moves no tension in any direction on the fabric is given and so it goes inside this big drum which is heated and there is this endless belt which is compressing the fabric here the fabric has already been is coming out of the sanferizing zone into this all right and then if this belt becomes wet there is an auxiliary drawing unit it moves over it the belt gets dried and the dry belt again comes in contact and so this process goes on so very important beautiful drying system it's got a big large drum and a small auxiliary drying drum which is used for drying the belt the large drum dries the fabric in a tensionless state and the fabric which is sanferized obviously need that kind of a condition you don't want to stretch it till it is completely dry just a few more points that we will talk about stenter which is the most important machine in the finishing system if you remember pad dry cure process so after padding the drying and the curing takes place in this machine not on a drying cylinder or not on a festoon right so this is if you do pad dry cure of a process like the resin finishing is this is the machine flame retardancy this is the machine so when you do the finishing process this is very important machine now it's a very big machine and it has got many purposes to do one of the most more important purpose is dimension control so if you want the width to be controlled this is the machine you will control the width you want the length to be controlled this is the machine which control the length the final length of the fabric so this will this the type of machine which will do a stenter so stenter obviously has chambers where the fabric which is let's say shown here in yellow is picked up by endless chains on both sides there are chains which hold the fabric from the selvages or near the selvages they can pull or relax depend on what is the treatment that you want to give and then it takes all along the drying area and the curing area or sometimes called polymerizing area so cross linking will take place there so you may not have one chamber for dryer there may be more chambers for drying there may be more chambers for curing because what is interesting is how much water is coming in and what is the moisture which is going out at the drying stage then the temperature of the curing will be much higher and so cross linking may take place there complete dimension control this is one of the beautiful machines so the role of a stenter is drying of course curing yes thermosol dyeing if you have heard dispersed dye can be you know dyed by thermosol process at higher temperatures this type of machine will work heat setting we talked about will be done on a stenter the cause it gives you dimensional stability and complete control so synthetic fibers want to shrink so you will allow them to shrink the chains will come closer and then shrinkage can take place all this is stenter's role very important machine various types of clips are used or pins are used to hold so this is a example of some pins so there are chain this is a link of a chain these are pins where the selvage is pushed so you can if you want to pull or push you you can do that completely control so these links are then linked in some manner which go all around so depending upon what type of link it can go like this or it can move like this right so 
there are if, if you do not want the pin marks then there are clips which just hold the fabric and then pull and sometimes they are a combination hybrid kind of system where it is a clip as well as pin system whichever you want to use one can use. All these type of things will be part of let us say uh, stenter, but it is a very sophisticated machine also other than drying and thing because it must sense the salvage correctly and then uh, pierce the pin or clip hold by a clip right. So, unless if the salvage is on some other side and clip is somewhere else either in the center or somewhere else you can have tears also. So, it has to be very accurately done. So, there are uh, electromechanical sensors which sense the edges of the fabric and the, the rails are guided to the salvage so that they clip ok. Humidity control is required because if the humidity in the chamber becomes too high rate of evaporation will be very slow which is obviously nobody will desire. So, fresh air has to come and the hot air has to go out other than the heat, the temperature measurement and then the recovery people like to measure the humidity of the exhaust as it is coming out because they tells you the idea as to whether the humidity in the chamber is more or less. If it is humidity is more you would like to draw more fresh air, if it is less you would like to slow it down right this is how you will like to control the humidity of the air other than the moisture control, temperature control all that has to be done. An industrial stenter may look something like this can also move at a very fast speed depend on depends on what you are doing uh, capability is there. It is a long machine it takes a large amount of area very important machine from the finishing point of view right. Last thing every machine processing machine may have something called an expander bar something like this an expander bar is the fabric first passes over these so that it gets stressed in the width direction. So, there are no creases to remove the creases this is what uh, may be a part of every machine in the feeding system around the feeding system. So, uh, you may have if you have visited any industry you may have seen see any machine you will have something like this there are many guide rollers, but this is one of the important ones. This is not just for guiding, but to make sure that there are no creases as it is being fed to the stenter or any such machine, like even a cylinder drying machine. If folded fabric goes over the thing, it is not good. Single layer, it must go in an open width form. All right, find out this expander bar rotates, but on a curved axis. How does it happen? Find it out yourself. I am giving you one uh, design problem as an engineer, engineer you are supposed to do designing. So, suppose we do not have to submit anywhere this is not for evaluation purposes you can do it yourself and just do whatever. You want to design a system to remove condensed water from cylinder drying machine steam which get condensed something what probably happening you will find out you want to make more efficient system what will you do do it yourself design a drying drying cylinder drying machine which does not require which does not have condensation issues at all no condensation issue how will you do that you can also think of designing continuous monitoring of moisture on a fabric as the fabric is going in it is a certain amount of moisture as coming out it got certain amount of moisture based on that your speeds, temperatures etcetera will have to be adjusted. Can you design some kind of a sensor like this? We will like enjoy this keep doing it think about it read as much as you can. Coming to the end right we have learnt about some of the finishing machines and their principles. Remember we are not talking about details of the machines. We are ending this is the last class and I hope you have learnt something out of it. We, throughout this whole thing we have been talking about principles, 
somewhere chemistry has come again principle we're not looking at recipes we've not been talking about temperatures times required their optimization processes which can be done as long as you know why you're using what you're using so this was the first course which gives you an overall objective overall feeling of what finishing is all about but if we want to know more maybe an advanced course may have to be floated or attended maybe we'll meet sometimes maybe in this type of forum itself uh, where we can probably discuss advanced level finishing courses also so at the end i hope you have enjoyed and uh, wishing you all the best for the final exams of this course all the best